I read 13 books in May and that feels like a whole lot of books. During May I participated in Escape the Readathon and it really had my reading going pretty good. Honestly, I had an overall pretty good reading month so I cannot be complaining. My total 13 books ended up being 5,887 pages. It feels like a whole lot of pages. I read some big boys this month which makes my average page count per day in May 190 pages. I read a lot and the average page count of my books were 453 three pages. No surprise to literally anyone who's been on my channel this year, my most read genre was fantasy romance. Don't think that this has changed one single month this year. Here's the, the thing that I'm excited about though, my star rating breakdown, because I gave out two five stars in May, five four stars, three three stars, and I did give out three two stars, but I gave out zero one stars. So like, honestly, look at how many fives and fours I had. Like that's so many for me. I'm really impressed with that number. That makes my average star rating 3.4 six and the only higher month was February at 3.57 where I had a lot of five stars but other than that I've been under three so this month feels pretty good for me. I read two new releases, eight backlist and three that were published last year. I did not realize how many audiobooks I read this month. I only read one book completely physically. I read 10 using the audiobooks which was me in my Stardew Valley era like honestly gold star to Stardew Valley. I picked that up this month and that is like my new favorite thing to ever exist so like if I'm gonna remember one thing about May, it's probably gonna be Stardew Valley. And that was why I read so many audiobooks. And then I read two ebooks. I did complete one series, so that's pretty good. And then I read eight fantasy romance books, one indie fantasy book, one thriller, one fantasy, one mystery, and one horror. So other than fantasy romance, I was dabbling a little bit. Let's get into the actual reviews for these books and hear me gush about a lot of these. We started the month off with a bang, quite literally, with The Veiled Kingdom by Holly Renee because not only did I really really like this, I gave it four stars. I also really enjoyed the smut in this, which is like, until this month I didn't think of myself as someone who like enjoyed smut. And then I read quite a few books this month where I was like, yeah, the smut did it for me. And in this book, it really did it for me. Now this isn't gonna work for a lot of people. It is a bully romance. It is enemies to lovers, reluctant allies to lovers. He's not very nice to her, even in those smut scenes. But like, I don't know, it worked for me. In this, we're following our main character who is the princess, but she has been treated very poorly by her dad, the king. She's been locked away and she escapes. She ends up running right into the hands of the rebellion. And in order to save her own life, she decides to work for them. However, they cannot know she's the princess because that will not be good for her. So she's keeping that a secret, trying to bide her time, trying to figure out how to escape the rebellion at some point. However, Dakra, the son of the leader of the rebellion, is on to her. He knows something isn't right with her. The thing is, the more he tries to figure out what's going on with her, the more infatuated he gets by her, and it leads to some things. And I really enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun. I gave it four stars over five just because the characters lacked some like depth to them. I wanted a little bit more from the story. It definitely focused on the romance and the smut, but I had so much fun. I binged this in like a day. It was so easy to read and I would definitely recommend. Also, isn't the copy just so pretty? Next up, I picked a chunky boy up and I read Harold by Rob J. Hayes. This is like an 800 page book. I gave this one four stars as well. I really enjoyed it. This is part of the trilogy of trilogies. I feel like I've talked about this so much on my channel, but Rob J. Hayes is releasing three book ones are all part of an over expansive world. So we are getting three trilogies and all book ones are coming out this year and you can read all book ones and then go into next year and read all book twos and I think it's a lot of fun. You don't have to, you can read trilogy by trilogy by trilogy, but I read it in chronological order of book ones. So I read Demon, Deathless, Herald. Demon is my favorite out of all of them, but Harold was a strong contender. Honestly, I thought this book was just a little bit too long. It's a bit of a quest story and like it could have been shorter in my opinion. It didn't need to be so long because at times it dragged, but I did really like the discussion on religion in this. I loved the conversations on power corrupting and the way that like Hayes makes me switch who I'm cheering for constantly. That was really cool for me. Harold follows our main character who has grown up in the ages of the angels being dead. God has been murdered. <laughs> And the king, who is immortal, has been tracking down the angels to kill them because you can get the angels' powers from their blood and essentially cannibalism. 
We've almost killed off all the angels. However, the fifth age is here and their bell has to be rung by the next herald and they're not sure who it is, but they're secrets of our main character who might have some angel bloodline in her. And you go on a journey and you watch the cannibalism and you watch a lot of dark things, but like really interesting and intriguing things. Rob J. Hayes can write in my opinion and I really enjoyed this one. Next up, I read The Missing and I gave this one two stars. This is one of my least favorite reads. I read this really quickly. It's a really quick audiobook. This follows our main character who is abandoned on an abandoned island with a few strangers. We have to watch what goes down. It's supposed to be a thriller, but I think the romance really took a center part of this story. I wanted there to be a lot more action. I feel like the story moved the characters along. The characters didn't move the story along. And I just wanted the characters to make decisions, to make it thrilling. Like, I just feel like I was watching a character react to things. It was very reactionary and I wanted action. I was just left kind of bored in this and just didn't really enjoy it and don't have a lot to say. I understand why some people could really like it, but it didn't work for me. Right about now is when I started Stardew Valley and I picked up the Stars and Shadows series by Holly Renee. This is the full trilogy in a bind up, so I only have like one copy of it. I read the entire trilogy. I gave the first book three stars, the second book three stars, and the fourth book two stars. Overall, I'm giving this series probably a three star. I had fun with it, but it was a listening audiobook as I gamed, and I don't think I would have enjoyed it if I hadn't binged it all at once, and if I hadn't been doing something else while reading it. Like, if I had, like, just sat down and physically read this, I don't think that this was a book for me, but because I was just looking for something easy to listen to while I did something else, I didn't take the book too seriously, and I had fun with it, because this is the fastest burn I've ever read. There is no slowness in this. The second they see each other, they are in love and there is going to be floodgates opened. Like from page 50 of the first book, the floodgates are open. There's going to be smut. Holly Renee writes really interesting smut. There's a book spine scene that happens in this that I've talked about quite a bit at this moment in time. I feel like it's come up in a lot of videos, but the book spine is used so that he doesn't touch her in... it was... it was something. Um, but yes, like, I don't know if I necessarily recommend this book to everyone, but if you're looking for, like, something fun, something easy, something light, I would recommend this series. There's not a lot of definition to it. Essentially, we're following our main character who is star-blessed, and what that means is that she has a certain type of magic and she has been destined to marry the prince. The prince wants to take her power by drinking her blood and then he only gets power by drinking her blood and getting her power and essentially draining her of her power. And he's really, really cruel and so kind of is his mom. However, his brother is not as cruel except for with book spines, apparently. We watch them as they have to kind of keep it secret because obviously no one can know because he's his brother's fiance. And we just watch them have sex a lot. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about this book. Truly, truly that's all. This on the back says, my brother's betrothed on her knees before me, ready to pledge her allegiance with her perfect mouth. And that sums up what this book's about in my opinion. I enjoyed it. I don't know, like it was a fun time, easy read. After that, I picked up Air of Fire. Very different vibes. <laughs> very, very, very different vibes. This is the third book in my opinion, but also people call it the fourth book because Assassin's Blades, but it's the third book in the Throne of Glass series. This is the book that everyone says, it changes. The Throne of Glass series changes changes in this book and it does. Like this book feels so different than the first two books. It doesn't feel like YA fantasy romance. It feels like YA fantasy now. Like there is this expanded world building and stuff. So I really enjoyed this. I do think we go from minimal POVs to way too many POVs far too quickly. It was overwhelming to go to six POVs in this book. Like there are six POVs in this and it just felt like who, what, where, when, especially because almost all of them are new and we've never seen them before. I kind of wish they were slowly introduced as the series went on. However, Manon, she's my girl. I loved her and her little dragon who shocked. I'm also a Kale fan and I know, I know not everyone is, but so far I'm still a fan and I'm liking his journey. Throne of Glass, the first book in the series follows Selena Sardothian, who is the best assassin in the world, but she has been put into a prison. But the prince comes and makes her a deal. He's looking for a champion to compete in his father's battle to find the perfect champion. Selena's looking to escape prison. If she wins this tournament of champions, she becomes the king's primary champion. The rest pretty much all die. And she gets a little bit of her freedom, so why would she say no to that deal? She obviously doesn't, and that's where our series starts. This one, Selena's character just feels so different to me. Like, I don't know how to explain this book besides saying, like, it feels so different than one and two, and I'm glad I continued this 
series. I'm excited to pick up Queen of Shadows. I'm excited to see where everyone goes. A four star from me. I don't think I said. I gave it four stars. And after that, I picked up Fate and Furies by Helen Shore. I gave this one four stars as well. This is the third book in the Legends of Thesmar series. The fourth book is coming out soon and I'm really excited. I'm excited to finish the series. This is following Wilder and Althea. In this world, there is a prophecy that a woman will wield a blade of darkness. And so this has meant that they think women can't wield blades. However, Althea is against that idea and wants to become a war sword and she's going to do anything possible to become a war sword, including training under Wilder Hawthorne, who is the like grumpy war sword of the realm. It's very grumpy sunshine, except for Althea isn't like Nestle sunshine, but like Wilder's just very grumpy. This third book I thought was a lot of fun. I think we had a lot of plot in this one, which I really enjoyed. The second book was a little too much smut for me and not enough character development and enough plot. I think the third book did handle everything I wanted in the second book. It felt like we got answers to things, we expanded on things. I'm really happy I didn't give up on the series after book two, because book two was really meh for me. But book three, I gave four stars. So like, obviously I really enjoyed it and I can't wait to see how this ends. I really love Wilder Hawthorne. I don't think I've felt this way about a man character in a long time. Like, I just think he's so, I don't know, I just love him. That's all I have to say. We're moving on. Next up, I picked Glow of the Everflame up, and then right after that, I read Heat of the Everflame. And to be honest, I binged these back to back. One is 600 pages and one is 1,000 pages, and they blur in my brain. I don't know where one ended and the other one started. No clue. So I'm kind of gonna talk about them as one. I gave both of them five stars. I do think the third book was a little long. However, because I binged it back to back from two and three, like, I think I think I literally ended two and started three like within minutes. Could that be because I didn't give it a break in the middle? Yes, but also I don't think any book needs to be over a thousand pages long. I just truly don't. A good sweet spot is around 600 for me. We have a world where the gods came and fell in love with humans, but they didn't want to outlive their human companions. They didn't want to see them die, so they bound their lives to the humans. So when their human counterpart passed away, they would too, which left their children, the descended, in charge of the land. However, time has gone by and the descended have kind of become cruel. They think they're better than the humans. They have separated themselves from the humans. They don't really care about the humans. And our main character has grown up in this world and she's always been told to avoid the descended at all cost. Her mother said, do not go there. Do not meet one. Do not do anything. However, her mother was a descended healer, meaning she went into the castle and she healed the king and the royalty in the castle uh, because the descended didn't do things like that. They had magic, so they didn't need to learn the human skill but when their magic failed, they have to call on the humans to do things. Hmm. What a shock. But when her mother goes missing, DM takes the mantle of the descended healer and she does exactly what her mother told her not to do and she ends up co-mingling with the descended, which leads to, to some things. Here's the thing. I gave book one a generous three star. I read Spark of the Everflame and was like, nah, this is not for me probably. Until the end when I really liked the end and I decided I was gonna continue. Then it became one of my favorite series of all time because book two and three leagues better. The writing leagues better. The plot holes gone. The information we got, the world building, intense amazing. Like, I don't understand how the same writer wrote book one and then wrote book two and three, but I'm not complaining anymore because, like, I loved book two and three so much. Like, this was so good in my opinion. I loved the world building in this, the magic system, how the magic had to do with the land and how the magic didn't really go through bloodlines. It went through, like, the strongest person. I mean, it often happened through bloodlines, but I, I still thought that, that was a really interesting take on it. I really, really liked our love interest in this, and I thought their romance was really sweet. I think a a lot of people like it because they truly fight for each other. It's not really ever against each other and I think that that will really work for a lot of people. I feel like they were fighting against the world, not necessarily like fighting within their own relationship. Yes, they had arguments and stuff, but it didn't feel like miscommunication always. It just felt like a regular relationship argument because you loved someone. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one and definitely will be recommending it to a lot of people. I think that these are so good and I need more people to read them. I think that they are going to be the next big thing. Like the next big romanticy is this series once everyone starts reading it you will realize that this is epic, amazing, incredible. I'm not someone who likes to say push past book one, but please push past book one. After that, I picked up A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and I shocked myself by also giving this four stars. I really enjoyed this. I picked this up with my friend who wanted to buddy read it. And to be honest, she was like, you don't have to buddy read it with me. I think you're gonna hate it. And I was like, no, no, I'll do it. It's fine. I'll just hate read it if I hate it. And then I ended up giving it four stars. Like I had so fun with this. It gives pretty little liars vibes. It is a murder mystery. We're following our main character who's doing a school project 
on a murder that happened in her town trying to figure out what actually happened. There are a lot of twists and turns, some predictable, but some I thought were fun and not predictable. I really enjoyed Buddy reading this. I thought it was really fun to text each other with like our theories and our predictions. Like I definitely would recommend this for a Buddy read. I still need to pick up book two. I was supposed to pick up book two and I didn't and my friend did and she liked that one as well. So like I'm really excited to continue on in this series. I was not expecting that at all. But if you're looking for like a fun time mystery, if you liked Pretty Little Liars, read this book. Like this was so good. And I'm so shocked by how good I thought it was. And I breeze through it. It's like such an easy read. It's also becoming a TV show, so perfect time to check it out. Then I read A Deal with the Elf King, which I gave three stars, sadly. This is by Elise Kova, who I've loved before, twice. I loved the Air Awakened series, and I loved her vampire book that's set in the same world as A Deal with the Elf King, but this one was just very mid to me. It just like didn't bring anything exciting to the table for me. I thought the relationship was sweet, but like there was nothing going on, nothing like driving me forward into the book. Like the plot just was there and like I don't know it all just felt very mediocre and I just was not invested in it. I think it could work for a lot of people but it did not work for me. They just kind of accept that they're in love so this is a series of standalones where a human is put into an arranged marriage with a magical being. In this one there's a city on the brink of the elven world and they have a deal with the elves that they will give them a human queen that has some sort of magic every single century and in return the humans will get to live longer than other humans. They kind of get some of that like elf magic. So our main character is chosen to be the next queen of the elves. And because it's an arranged marriage, she just kind of accepts that she's going to be in love. Like it's like, okay, it's worked before. So I'm going to love you. There's no like falling in love in my opinion. And it's just like not my type of story. Like I typically love a lot of banter and things like that. And I just think that they accepted their fates and it's okay because it is true. Like a lot of people fall in love in arranged marriages and in real life, like accepting it and giving it the ability to work is the way to go. But it just didn't really make for interesting a book to me, but I think a lot of people will love it. I just felt like it was really meh. I will continue on in the series. This is the second one I read from the series and I loved the vampire one. I gave it four stars and was like, I could read a whole nother book with these characters characters. I think it'll be like a case-by-case -case scenario in this series. And then lastly, I read Curse the Reaper, which is my one horror book for the month. This was picked for me by Sarah from Wicked Reading. If you haven't checked out Sarah's channel, you definitely should. I thought I was gonna hate this. I was 100% sure of picking this up. I was like, I'm DNFing this. I'm gonna hate this. I ended up giving this four stars. I thought it was so intriguing. In this, we're following our main character who has worked in the film industry as like a serial killer for his whole life. However, as he's gotten older, he has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and he's losing parts of his memory and he thinks that he is becoming the serial killer. Like he thinks he is that serial killer. And I thought that was so interesting. Alzheimer's runs in my family. And so like a lot of people, it is a fear of mine. However, unlike a lot of people, when I have a fear, I like to read about it because it adds extra horror to it for me. And it gives me like anxiety. And I want to feel that way when I'm reading horror books. And I thought it was such an intriguing premise. So it really worked for me. So yeah, I don't know. I really, really liked this. I thought it was interesting. Wait, I did not give this four stars. I'm lying to you. Apparently I should have given it four stars. I gave it a 3.5, but considering how much I'm thinking about it right now, maybe I should have given it four stars. On my stats, I did give it three, but now I'm contemplating my life because... I really went into this thinking I'd given it four stars, which says something. Let me know down below if I should give it four or three stars. <laughs> like, should I stick with my initial reaction or like my reaction now? Let me know. Anyways, I would definitely recommend this to people who love a like slower story. Like it is a little bit psychological, but it is not like super, super slow. Like I think it's medium paced is what I would probably put it at. And it's like in the head, there's like two POVs. There's a lot of talk on the film industry, which I also think was really cool. I really enjoyed this. I'm shocked. Let me know down below what your favorite book of the month was because I'm always excited to hear those so I can pick them up. And if you'd like to continue watching my videos, I will have a vlog up here for you to check out. Maybe the vlog where I read this so that you can accurately tell me if I should be giving this three or four stars. If you'd like to leave me an emoji just to say you were here, leave me the popcorn emoji. 